Hey everybody, just another video, <clears throat> some more tinkering. Got to keep warm in the Redneck Fun Factory. Um, so what I did was I went online in the ever, the never-ending hunt for a better pinpointer. Because um, I don't feel like paying 120 some odd dollars for a Garrett Pro Pointer. Um, not that they're not a good product, I think it's the best thing going. I just think that, you know, dollar for dollar they're slightly overpriced. I didn't even pay that much for my detector, so I can't justify the cost. So what I did was I went on eBay and I found, um, and I didn't realize it then, but I know now and some of you may already know it. They have these kits at Radio Shack. Oh, don't mind the KFC backdrop here. We bought a load of pellets for the pellet stove and this was used as some of the packaging material. So they have these things. They have them at Radio Shack. They go for about 20 bucks, okay? And it's a do-it-yourself metal detector kit. Um, and before I found those at Radio Shack, I actually bought two of them from eBay. I got both of them for 20 bucks and free shipping. Um, I can't remember the name of the company, but if you're interested, let me know. I'll try and see if I can find the name of the company that I got them from. But check them out on eBay. They are Velleman, V-E-L-L-E-M-A-N kit. This one uh, is the K7102R7 metal detector. And basically what it is, uh, is it's everything you need to make it yourself. Um, I'm going to open this one up and lay it out and show you exactly what you get. Hold on. There's what you get. You get uh, a length. I don't know exactly how long it is. I know it's too much. A length of uh, laminated copper wire. A ferrite rod that you wrap this around that. A printed circuit board. Pretty well labeled. I'll hold it there in case anybody wants to duplicate this. Okay, it's already got all of your printed part on the back, all your solder connections, solder points already done. Um, you get the little knob that goes into this uh, potentiometer or variable resistor, whatever you want to call that. That's your adjustment, you know, your gain adjustment. You get this smaller one, which actually has a much higher value. Uh, that's your, your main tuning. You get the 9 volt battery connector, this little push button, it's momentary, on, off, on, off, a little red LED light that lights up when you're near metal, your uh, transistors, your resistors, and your uh, electric Advil, I forget what those things are called, um, but I'm just having a brain fart. I do know what they're called. I just can't think of it at this second. Someone will be sure to tell me. And you get your paperwork, which they have other projects in here that you could do. Uh, this is the only one I wanted. But on the back, this is pretty important because you have to translate all of your resistors into their values to know which one goes where, which one is R3, R4, R5. Uh, like I said, I bought two and I've already built one. And the one I did build, all of these were in order. Uh, there's also two diodes on the on that card as well that you need. Um, so you need this that tells you the translation for your resistors. You know, what color band is what and which digit it represents uh, and so on and so forth. And there's the table that gives you the translation into values um, so you can turn around and you know deduct what that value is for that particular resistor where it is on this card and through the instructions determine which resistor it is on the kit it's a little bit of a pain in the butt but uh, all in all it's not too bad the instructions are really detailed it even teaches you or tells you how to solder, what the proper solder joint should look like, um, how to wrap the 
laminated wire around the ferrite rod. You know, your two different diodes. One's a Xano diode and the, the other one's a regular diode. Um, all your instructions and what steps to do. You know, step four, uh, five, six, and so on and so on. So, it's a pretty cool project if you know how to solder and you've got a little bit of experience. Excuse me, my cigar's going out. You got a little bit of experience doing soldering. It's a pretty fun project. Um, like I said, I've already built it. And as you guys know well enough by now, if not, you'll figure it out real quick. I just can't do things the way they tell me to. I do it first, and I did, and I got it working. But then I decided to start tinkering because my ultimate goal was to make a pinpointer of my own that's better than what's out there, you know, for the price anyway. Uh, so these run on a 9 volt. I added this little buzzer right here. Okay, it cost me, I think, 350 at uh, Radio Shack. And it fits perfectly on the circuit board like it was made for it. Um, let me see if I can get a... It's Radio Shack 273074. Just a buzzer, made in Taiwan, of course. And here is my finished product. Um, again, I've modified it. Normally they come out just like the picture shows you on the cover. Okay, with the coil just there. Even in this picture, they show you these little posts that you see soldered onto the board. They don't give you those posts. So whoever did this... Um, obviously didn't stay in the directions as well. And there's a little component right, where's my pinky? Right there. Okay. I don't know what that is, but it also does not come in the kit. Um, they give you this uh, instead. And they tell you to experiment with a couple different ones uh, in the directions. And there's another one there. Um, I can't think of what those things are called. We'll just stick with... Uh, Electric Advil for now, because that's what they look like. All right, my cigar's going to quit on me, and here's my cigar, people. Anyway, uh, and I had this much laminated copper wire left over after I was done. Um, so basically, uh, I extended, I used some more of that phone wire that I've got kicking around, to extend the coil wires. I secured the coil wires with electric tape. So now I've got this handy little probe that wanders about. Um, let's plug it in and do a test for you, show you what we get. Okay, we get a beep and a beep. Uh, hold on a second, I'm going to tune it in for you real quick. So we got it tuned in. Um, basically, with the, the tuning instructions tells you to, before you even connect the battery, to turn this pot all the way clockwise turn this pot all the way counterclockwise. Uh, for those of you on the other side of the pond, that would be clockwise, anti-clockwise. So then uh, you press and hold your button and turn this minor, this smaller pot counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on where you are, until the light goes out. That gives you your initial setting. And then you press and hold this and turn this one to fine-tune it, just to, you know, barely get it to, to tune. So we've got it all tuned up, okay? And what's cool about this is it's very touchy, and you can actually get it to just barely light the light, okay? And then when you get near something metal, okay, the light gets brighter and the buzzer gets louder. Let me see if I can get this whole thing for you. So it's actually doing like a proximity thing. So this would be about an inch away. And that would be right on it. And again, I got it online real cheap. Um, again, I've already begun to modify it. Put the buzzer in. Extended that. So i got to figure out a container to put it in so that this pot, I may have to relocate it, but um, 
it took me, and I know how to solder, and I've done this kind of stuff before, and just following the instructions uh, step by step, it took me maybe, I don't know, half an hour to build it, and then another half an hour to modify it. I had to go out and get that uh, buzzer, a little noisemaker there. And uh, there it is. We're going to keep going with this project, see if we can get her in a container somehow, some sort of a project box or make our own, and see how well we do. But it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't obviously tell you or discriminate against uh, different metals. There's the copper wire. And the ferrite, the ferrite does not. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me, let me tune this puppy in for you guys here. I know this table has metal on it, so. So that's how they tell you to do it. Okay, we'll do the tuning part first, okay? So you turn this one completely clockwise until it stops. Don't force it. And you're going to back it off until it stops beeping. Right there. Okay. And then this one clockwise. And that's your fine tuning. Alright, now here's my my gold wedding band. Hello. Okay, we gotta we messed it all up. Now we gotta do it all over again. So there we have it. You guys probably saw it before I did. But we just broke the positive lead. Right off. There it goes. So anyway, that's the kit. We'll fix that. No problem. No worries, mate. Whatever you guys say. But that's the kit. You guys uh, like to tinker like I do. Go out and get you one of these things. They're fun to do. Especially if you get kids that are interested in learning. You know, teach them how to solder. Teach them the difference between diodes and resistors and transistors and um, electric Advil and LEDs and uh, variable resistors or potentiometers, um, that kind of stuff, and 9-volt battery connectors, and printed circuit boards. So there you have it. That was a fun little project. Like I said, we'll keep modifying it, see how far we can get with it, see how long we can get that extension piece in the EverQuest for the Redneck Sun Pro Pointer, and uh, see how it goes. Maybe this one will work better because it's got that primary pot right there that the Centec did not have. Um, well, it did, but I think I was way out of the range of it. Maybe this one's got a different range value to it, so we'll see what happens. There it is. Thanks for watching.